Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our session today. Uh, today, uh, we have a very interesting, uh, you know, panelist from uh, all over the Asia, uh, from Singapore, from uh, Vietnam, and also from America, and with maybe some uh, Asian background. And today's uh, topic is exemplary leadership in Asia. Of course, you may know that there are so many changes recently, uh, mainly, of course, COVID-19, but also we are living in a digital transformation and also uh, some political changes, some political tensions in Asia, and also uh, we will have a new leadership in America soon. Uh, so in that, uh, you know, our period of transformation and transition, uh, of course, it will affect the, the style or shape of uh, Asian leadership. And as you may know that uh, Asian entrepreneurs often uh, don't follow the rules and achieve the great success. Uh, so uh, how to absorb this attitude within the status quo, which is now severely disrupted COVID-19? Uh, now how to, you know, to steady the ship while embracing rapid, rapid change? Uh, what should we look for in our new leaders? That is today's theme. And uh, in that sense, uh, we have invited a uh, distinguished guest. And so uh, uh, we try to uh, deepen our discussion, also, although uh, the time is very short, but uh, I think everybody has a good insights. And today's uh, speakers uh, are all uh, Asian entrepreneurs, uh, except me. Uh, I am uh, the moderator. My name is Tsutomu Ishii. I am the deputy managing editor of the Japanese daily newspaper Asahi Shimbun. I was correspondent in uh, London until last year. Other than that, I was in uh, Cairo uh, at the time of Arab Spring and also Washington, D.C. Uh, so I am away from Asia a little bit, but uh, of course, you know, uh, I have been uh, covering so many uh, countries in developing countries and Asia and the Middle East. So I may, I may cut in and ask questions because I'm a journalist, so that's my, my job to ask questions. But before asking questions, I will open to the floor. Uh, I open the, the each speakers to speak briefly about four or five minutes uh, about your experiences, about your analysis on Asian leadership. Then after, uh, after that, we can uh, discuss uh, deeper. So starting from now, uh, well, today, uh, a little bit only one uh, female from uh, Vietnam, Trin. So uh, uh, I should open the floor to you first, please. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, um... Good, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. I'm very honored to, to in the panel discussion on the leadership. I'm Trinh. I'm from Vietnam. I'm the founder and the CEO of TalentNet Corporation. We focus on headhunting and human resource consulting. So it's very good. At least we see, observe the trend and we partner up most uh, in Vietnam and ADB streamline on outsourcing. So, I mean, uh, due to the COVID, very interesting trend we see in three areas. Number one is the ship basic model to the talent workforce, how you manage that, very different. The second, organization agilities, and the third one, building agile leadership. So very much my, my focus will talk more on agile one, agilities. So in terms of shift business model, it's very interesting. Uh, more and more company move on uh, online e-commerce, and you choose the way doing business very different. So in that context, we have to revisit business strategy. How you change the structure, adapt with what you think, and then you see you can shop sing the talent anywhere, not only in your country. But you pick up what is the good result of talent that is good for you at the high um, supply. You see lower cost, very important. And, and some from your business strategy and structure, you identify buy strategy, build strategy, and borrow strategy. And which one part is the more convenient for you? And more and more, you will use other result like freelancer. A time good workforce, how you mapping in your business need and focus not only position but change the structure more skill lesser. You focus on critical skill so you can view your workforce not on fixed position 
the traditional way but Muma a child you can use the the young or folk in different project based on the critical skill you need from the individual right and you can assign and move your workforce more benchmarking in the market to understand not only your organization internal but external benchmarking what is the best result for you in your running business so that is the first one in terms of agile a workforce agile talent management you have to work on strategy the second one focus on organization agilities you can agile in terms of culture in terms of structure in terms of workforce in terms of team and tool and process very much related to the the structure have gen move from hierarchy to project based and uh from authorities now move more effective collaboration on the individual team within organization more no boundary which function which department no more how you optimize 300 people in your organization how you leverage the resource based on the reticles and project that you need that kind of workforce okay so it move a lot change the mindset even you use a lot of ai and automation but you still need in hand effective collaboration and how you communication creativity incorporate more on connection meaningful innovation solution and trust relationship within organization to engage with the final to say uh, the results so effective collaboration chain management in organization is very important and the last one that is build agile leadership agile leadership very much on build on the agile speed focus on network and communities uh, so communication is the heart of on respect of leadership so you uh, will uh, move from traditional team with project with authority now you move more on self organizing in the team based on work for around um we call seven leadership facilitator how everyone can become leader facilitate all the member to make sure to achieve the objective right and and move from authority to multiple team various stakeholder no one it become one leader many leaders in organization and how you interact with people to motivate optimize the result optimize the talent up in general in organization to leverage the results so before you may focus on result focus direct and drive up to measure but now you take risk to grow focus grow focus help the people grow and guide people change the journey to optimize the talent of individual in organization and share the leadership to be creative and adaptive so that is the call one to help engage and hand the workforce within organization so in summarize uh at the entrepreneurship of the ceo gma now become more challenging than before because now you have to interact many leaders in organization and uh, should be organization to have the clear vision and purpose the purpose can attract people to stay with uh, to come with you and to retain your company become the story inspiring story of organization the second of uh, thinking how you structure your agile structure and the way of working differently than before is the most difficult because you have to train yourself first we have to train ourselves first before we lead other people change you see Okay yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay focused on the leadership uh, after after covid-19 but uh, my question to you first of all is how 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 serious how serious uh, the covid situation in your country because as far as i know that uh, vietnam 
uh, relatively managed well about COVID. So uh, in that sense, uh, in your country, uh, COVID-19 uh, affect less uh, to the, uh, uh, the you know business uh, business mm. community than any very, other countries in Asia. Could you explain mm. about that briefly? Very good, very good question. Uh, for again, luckily for us, we control the COVID very well, and our GDP for cut this year is two point five percent, and and a dynamic environment fifty percent less than thirty years on very young population. So the the, the government encourage more interaction between government and entrepreneurship. And strong competition among within domestic company, but not only domestic. So we have three three channel of business in Vietnam. One within local domestic together. One more and more regional regional organization like to set up the business in Vietnam, especially move from China to Vietnam for factory. For example, from Japan or Korea, Singapore, Thailand, and Malaysia. And the other part is the global. A global and European channel. So you see, the market is very strong competition where the organization have to build from within, to build a culture, to build organization, to build a workforce, to ready for the opportunities. This means we have a lot of opportunities, but we have to have forming the strong organization to ready for the competition, to ready for growing. Okay, thank you. And uh, the top five industry, for your information, the top five industry growing in the market. So e-commerce, e-commerce growing online trend a lot. Manufacturing, pharmaceutical, medical device, uh, very much retailer also growing, consumer function growing. And tech, because the workforce in Vietnam very good in, in tech, we like to roll that area, high tech industries. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And we move to the second speaker, uh, Mr. Yan Lu. Uh, he is the CEO and co-founder of BioCap Cap, Captivate uh, from San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so uh, Yan has a, a good, uh, uh, you know, uh, career uh, background, academic background of science technology, but also uh, he his business is somewhat, you know, uh, philosophical and uh, with something to do with ecosystem. Uh, so uh, I am very much interested in and curious about uh, your point, uh, your point of view. Uh, so Jan, please uh, speak from your side. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm the CEO of BioCaptivate. We are a think tank shaping the culture, narrative, managerial philosophy, and networking dynamic of the biotech and the synthetic biology field. So my take about the recent events and um, all the things happening is that um, COVID is a final stressor that causing the decline of the Western-centric cultural status quo. Long-term American doctrines, stories, belief systems like the Stanford Prison Experiment, the Law of Lies, um, a story that read by almost all American high schoolers as a um, commentary about human nature and uh, society nature and shareholder primacy and neoclassic economy all have been severely questioned and weakened and some of them have been broadly debunked. The present crisis is an opportunity to face cultural society, societal ills and to implement overdue holistic changes. And uh, a lot of the changes will come from um, uh, Asian culture and like a, a more glo uh, from a more globalist perspective, which is uh, includes uh, uh, Asian culture and also this um, right now is the end of the horse race mentality so for so long we failed to question ground rules and fundamental and unquestionable, unquestionable assumptions but these are the most important variables to be questioned and adjust we need leaders who don't blindly worship rules consensus and normalcy and i believe this is how we can get out of the crisis together and create a more prosperous world together thank you Okay, uh, thanks so much. So, uh, of course, uh, you are severely affected by uh, COVID-19. Uh, so, uh, uh, in general, how, how was the situation uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area? Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is really uh, the, the center of everything is happening, uh, like, uh, you know, headquarters of GAFA and uh, any uh, many, you know, new startups. Uh, those, uh, uh, you know, activities uh, have to be, you know, very active, uh, face to face, people to people. But at the same time, they are, uh, you know, digitally, uh, improved. So, well, uh, in that sense, uh, they can, uh, you know, keep continuing uh, their business, uh, in terms, uh, you know, even after COVID-19 or 
do you think it's uh, severely affected uh, in those new new uh, business? What what's your analysis? So it depends on which field you are in. So right now I see um uh, like uh, I would even use a renaissance a renaissance of biotech and science and deep tech because obviously um COVID is a biology issue. So therefore, it's very rational and reasonable that there's a renew a further focus of investing in um, in life science and medicine. And also, I in San Francisco, that I I see an exodus of a lot of uh, like soft tech uh, employees and perhaps entrepreneurs. So they migrate to uh, like some other part of the country in US. And I think that that will bring down the, the cost and uh, of the San Francisco Bay Area. So I think it will become actually easier to start to start business and also if you are if your uh, your business is focusing on things that are really important that things that touch a lot of people's life i think you will actually do really well and also i think you will actually get more uh, a higher amount of investment and also media attention so so far and then san francisco on the surface everything looks i mean oh so so far so good i mean so kind of okay, but but the thing is, uh, I anticipate things might get a little bit worse uh, uh, as like we we just uh, passed the, the Thanksgiving holiday. So, and but I but for the, in the long run, I'm very optimistic, and I believe that this is a reset and a re alignment. That's uh, so we can focus on things that really matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good analysis because uh, the uh, moving people from uh, you know urban area to uh, like rural area after COVID nineteen is a kind of phenomena uh, which is happening not only in San Francisco but also in Japan too. Uh, I myself uh, has been in charge of uh, SDGs reporting, you know, sustainable development goals uh, in my newspaper, and we just focused on uh, th those people's move from uh, urban area to uh, rural. Uh, in France, for example, you know, people are working in IT business in Paris, moving, you know, uh, a little bit far away from uh, the capital. And uh, similar things is happening in uh, Japan too. So, but, but uh, those uh, uh, immigration, uh, is this mainly uh, by the, the, the people work, uh, you know, working level or even leadership level? I mean, CEOs or company president are also thinking about moving uh, in San Francisco? I will think it's both. So we we have seen a lot of like uh, high profile investors and like executives. They either have moved away from California or or publicly entertaining the fall of such. And I think it it is a healthy phenomenon because I I think why San Francisco and why the the cities that uh, they have a lot to offer, but also sometimes it it gets a little bit too. To like to to uh, concentrate and too much like wealth and 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 uh, attention they pour into the city that it, it becomes like uh, too much competition of attention that, that because your our attention span is limited so spreading things to a different part of the country I think that that actually can be a, a win win thing. I see, I see. Thank you so much, uh, Yam. So well, then uh, we will move to uh, next speaker. Uh, moment. Uh, uh, Mr. Santos Kabati, uh, Kabati. Uh, he is a founder and CEO of ProArc Humanity Leadership and Technology Investing uh, from Atlanta metropolitan area. Uh, so uh, thank you, thank you, Santos. Please, uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much for having me um, again. Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> appreciate the opportunity to to be here and share my views. Um, again, this is Santosh. I'm the CEO and founder of ProArc. We're a technology uh, company uh, you know, with primarily focusing on cloud digital transformation and cybersecurity. Um, so I, you know, I completely agree with the, the shares that Trin and Jan have shared. Um, from my perspective, leaders, I think there was a reset button hit with COVID-19 in, in many ways uh, that we could have, you know, more than you know we could have imagined. Uh, the leaders will have to focus on, on especially in Asia as well, 
and globally, we'll have to focus on three main things from my perspective. One, you know, or its organization, their organization. Uh, two, their people. And three, their community. Um, I think Trin shared some ex excellent examples of how organizations have changed and their form of functioning organizing strategy has all been reset by COVID-19. I think COVID-19 accelerated and fast forwarded the, the future. So tomorrow is here as a result of COVID-19. So everything that we've learned, there's a lot of unlearning to do. It has made us realize that we cannot take things for granted. We have to be very nimble and agile. It put every company, small and big, however you know large you are and however small you are, into this so-called startup mode because everybody needed to react, you know, the same way. Um, we became, or we, we you know, agile, and that that will have that will continue to be the case for the foreseeable future. We will have to embrace technology. We will have to build res resilience into our businesses. Um, and we really need to transform almost day by day, you know. Uh, so there is there is no you know, short term, long term, you know, five year plan. While there can be one, but it has taught that you better be in a position to be very nimble and, and be very responsive. So organizational resilience is a big deal in the future. Um, at the same time, COVID-19 also taught the importance of, of uh, you know, its people. I mean, you really need to take care of your people and, and their well-being has to be at the center of the future. Um, it, you know, there was a lot of conversation for the last 10 years about working from home. Well, you know what? It just happened instantly without anybody having, you know, any, any planning or adjustment to do. But it's amazing everybody across the world embraced it and supported their organizations. And if you see that stories after stories coming out on how uh, all teams just, just did their best, went above and beyond to meet their organizational goals. Uh, so people will have to be at the center of it. Work from home has its own challenges. Um, and in general, you know, it is taking a toll on, on its people. So inclusion, diversity, and well-being will have to be at the center of the growth plan. The third is is this community. It, COVID also has taught that we are very connected in, in many ways than we can imagine. Um, if one one microbe such as a virus can impact the world, it goes to show how connected we are and how much we need to care about community. And that's where the sustainability becomes a key priority for future. So at some point, purpose will also have to come in front of profit um, for organizations. Uh, and, and in Asia, um, as Jan said, and you know, there is this notion of, okay, we, we, we don't play by the rules. Well, in a way we can embrace that and be much more agile and much more responsive, but we do need to care about our people. We do need to take care of our community. And that's how we need to create a growth story of the future. So th those are my views. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Santosh. And uh, everybody agrees that uh, leadership has to focus on uh, not only organization, but also people and also the community. That is quite important points. And uh, as you mentioned, of course, COVID-19 uh, uh, gave us a different kind of uh, situation and environment. And especially about the community. As you know, today's uh, uh, meeting itself is a kind of example of a new type of uh, community because uh, we all uh, we didn't know know each other, but uh, we uh, get together digitally, and we can exchange views uh, online, and uh, we can maybe uh, create something new. Uh, so, uh, Santos, how can can we uh, make balance between uh, the kind of uh, uh, traditional or conventional geographical community? based on the connection of, you know, locality uh, and also the new shape of digital community. Uh, what, what do you think those uh, balance or changes, how to shift as a leader? Um, excellent point, uh, you know, Sotomu. Uh, from my perspective, the digital innovation is now allowing us to embrace our local communities 
and also bring our global perspectives and and into our lo in our local communities and tie them together whether you take you know poverty whether you take uh, climate whether you take uh, you know ecology these are all local issues but these are also global issues every one of them starts at the ground level uh, but what technology did is actually brought everything together instantly and gave us a powerful means to to solve our problems uh, it, it all starts locally, right? But now that we have a global knowledge, as you rightly said, this room itself has visionaries. Imagine what we could accomplish if all of our collective views are then applied to our local communities, wherever we are. I think we'll get amazing results, whether it's, you know, agriculture, whether, you know, any area that you pick that matters from sustainability perspective. So that's my view. That's a great. great. Thank you so much. You know, I, I, before the COVID-19 you know, situation happens, uh, we all, you know, advocate uh, the, the thinking, act, act locally and think globally. But at the same time, this is just a kind of slogan. But now it's a time uh, we can, uh, you know, make it uh, real. I mean, we can really achieve that kind of uh, target goal. Uh, so well, thank you so much, uh, Santosh. Uh, then, uh, uh, Last, not but not the least speaker uh, is Mr. Barwant. Uh, just a moment, Barwant. <laughs> yeah, Barwant Jain. Uh, uh, he is the founder at Optimum Solutions from Singapore.